Well, I'm here at beautiful Wilderby Lavender and Honey Farm. It's also a meadery here near Port Townsend. Beautiful little farm with a cut flower garden and pruned fruit trees, espaliered trees. Beautiful little area. I'm here with Plain Air Washington artist for a quick little two hour paint out. So I'm gonna get set up. I think I like this spot. It's got a little view of the building and the pretty rows of multicolored lavender. So I think I'll get set up here and decide on how I'm gonna crop in. I have chickens and goats. This is roughly the scene I'm going to paint. I'm going to zoom in on this little slope. The ground kind of slopes up as it's leading toward that pretty little building. So I'm going to put, to put the eaves of the building on the upper one-third line. I'm going to put this prominent bush on the lower one-third line and try to just capture the rise of the ground up and back down. I really like the purple, the lavender color against the warm brown of the, the dirt that it's planted in and also the warm tones of the grass in this little hill. So that's what I'm going to try to paint. I'm going with a little 8 by 10 inch birch panel that I gessoed. Something small since we only have a couple hours here. They want us to clear out before they open for the public so we can get out of their parking lot. Nice of them to let us paint here. Such a beautiful morning, nice, cool, and crisp. I'm gonna go pretty quick. I'll turn my GoPro on to my palette so you can see what paints I'm dipping into. I've got some clean artist turpentine here. I'll be using this nice big Utrecht about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch wide, old broken in bristle brush. Just get a nice blend of radiant, radiant lim lemon and yellow ochre. Something close to that warm grass, dry grass. Maybe tilt it a little bit warmer toward the bottom with the yellow ochre. bit lighter, cooler with the radiant linen toward the top. As usual, I'll start with the turpentine wash. I'm just going to wash in a light Gamblin radiant lemon and yellow ochre wash over the whole scene and then I'll go with a small brush and sketch the composition. So as I do this initial wash, I'm going to leave the one-third lines mostly showing instead of trying to rub them out. Then I'll go immediately into mixing the full colors. I'll mix up the background colors, a little lower chroma, a little less intense. And then as I come forward, I'll try to get more intense to give that illusion of, of depth. Now I'll take this small evergreen filbert and just do a sketch. There's a little bit of burnt umber. I'm trying to think now, do I want to copy what I'm seeing exactly or do I want to change things up just a little bit? Right now there's a tree right in front of the building, kind of hiding most of the building. And I think it might actually be more interesting if I change that. If I put the tree over, maybe on the side here, and show more of the building. The building has these nice dormer windows. That would be kind of fun to include. They're pretty well hidden by that small tree. 
what I'm sketching, I like to keep things kind of boxy and square. I find it's a little easier. Capture the composition quickly if I keep it square, keep it kind of boxy, and also makes a more interesting drawing. I think I'll also shrink this little building over here as well, just a little bit. Apologize for all the road noise. And then for that tree, dip in just a little bit of sap green, warmed up with the yellow ochre mixture, just to keep that tree a little bit separate. I think it'd be more interesting if maybe the tree went off the panel. Now I'm going to dip into just a little bit of ultramarine blue. Add a little bit of a lizard crimson to start out with the purple. And suggest where the lavender will be. Okay. Now I'll take this small number four rosemary evergreen flat and wipe out the lightest lights. Here I'm adding just a little bit of chaos, a little bit of abstraction to hint at the shapes of the lavender plants. I don't want to paint each and every lavender, I just want to suggest the, the shape. Alright, that's a pretty good sketch and initial value pattern. I kind of like the abstract shapes I have going there. I'll clean up the drawing as I'm painting the full colors. So now I'm going to mix up these background greens. I'm going to try to keep them a little on the gray side, a little on the higher value side, so that as I come forward I can have more contrast and more intense color. You are so fastidious. Yeah. Approach, I, I love it. I don't like to have a mess. I, I, I don't can't, either. I should take a workshop with you. Do, you. you don't teach though, do you? I would be happy to do a workshop. I, I mean, I'm not a teacher by profession but I enjoy teaching okay. yeah I if you want to I got your info now, yeah so. just let me know I'd be happy to go out with you and gives me an excuse to do more painting yeah. okay I've got a few colors mixed up now I've got some very light high value grayed out blues for the sky a little warmer lighter one as it comes near the horizon there's actually some clouds back there but the space I've reserved on the panel for the sky it doesn't leave me any room for clouds. And I've got some grayed out blue and alizarin crimson for the metal roof of the closer building. I'm just going to use this color for the roof of the back building. And I've got some high value grayed out greens for the trees behind the buildings, a shadow side and a uh, sunlight side. Then I've got two colors for the wood of the building. This upper color is the darker brown wood. This lower color is the more red orange color. This wood is kind of going vertically, so I'll paint that with vertical strokes. This wood is going horizontally. So I'll try to follow those strokes just to imply the pattern.
this approach is always kind of like tripped me up because I've taken too many workshops probably and everybody yeah. has their own different way of doing it. But yep. the way you've got it set up makes really sense because I don't like messing either. Have you heard of Richard Schmidt? Yes. Wonderful oil painter, wonderful artist. I think I've got a couple of his studios actually. He has a wonderful book called A La Prima. Yes, I do have that. Yeah, that's that really changed the way I approach plein air. I bought it about three years ago and really like his approach. So you mix all the different, and then you put it up above. See, I don't think they do this. I like Does this because it. No, I didn't get this extra panel from him. He he goes out with a much bigger. I didn't take a workshop from him. I just read his book and watched some of his videos. Yeah. Um, he goes out with a much bigger setup. I, I like to have a nice clean mixing area, so I set it up here to get it out of the way, and also and make it thick enough so it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't is, like it when it's soupy. It makes yeah, a mess. Then. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. That makes your palette so much bigger. Yeah. And, and then it, having your paintbrushes here, and yeah, this is really. I want to mix up the lavender colors now. So I'm going to mix the lavender colors all with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. I may add just a little bit of cobalt blue or cerulean blue to shift some of the colors. The more colors you add, the duller it gets. It is cold under this tree. The wind is chilly. So it's making my face a little bit numb. Um, so I'll mix those colors first, set them aside, and then I'll mix up some of the, the greens of the foliage. The greens are all kinds of different shades, but if I try to simplify it, there's a very yellow green and there's a warmer, redder green. So I'll just go with those colors and I may fade them out with a little bit of gray for the background rose. And then the, the dry grass and the dry ground are pretty close to the colors I have washed in. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more color and paint it on very lightly, very thinly. I've got some colors mixed up here. I've got some light yellows for the soil and the grass, the dry grass. I've got some greens for the foliage of the lavender. And then I've got some lavender colors, really clean colors, blue and red. And then a, a mix that's really high value with a little bit of red, a little bit of cad red added for the closest lavender. It has kind of a warmer tint to it. I'll dip into full chroma color as I need to as well just to shift things around a bit. Well, the wind is cold under this tree. I've actually got the 
shivers. Um, that's the thing, plein air painting. I thought it was going to be hot today, so I didn't bring my hoodie. I brought a little lighter shirt, and I am freezing. That's part of the challenge and, and the joy of it. You can stand in the shade and be a little more comfortable and have a little more consistent light, but then it's harder to judge the colors and values if the shade is too deep. It's also hard to judge. Color and value. It's also hard to judge color and value if you stand in the sunlight. That's okay. It's a, it's a wonderful hobby, wonderful sport, wonderful fun thing to do. Well, it was a pretty day here at Wilderby Farm. Here's my little painting, 8 by 10 inch oil. Pretty strong backlight there, I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll take it back to my studio. Gorgeous day. It's nice and cool, so it's good to harvest. Nice and cool. I'm surprised how cool it is. Yeah, all the hanging lavender. They've got a bunch back here as well. Hi. Good. Smells delicious. They sample meat here. I've got to go in and check that out. delicious. I didn't do too many. I just did a couple samplers. I did a dry Brother Adam and a sweet Fallen. I really like the dry. I bought a bottle. Yeah, really friendly place. Really beautiful place. Glad I came. I'm glad I sampled the mead. <laughs> 